Um, I learned a big lesson at the time of the <laughs> referendum <laughs> campaign. Don't call it anything. I know what you're going to say. It's a mugs game. I don't know. It's going to be close, isn't it? Um, I, I, you know, probably... You know, you go with the bookmakers, you go with no, the no, market, no, 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 don't, probably. Don't concede but, it and go to bed, but I'm otherwise there'll be another result. But I'm, you know, uh, you know, probably, but who knows? This is 2016, it's the year of big surprises. It's going to be all about turnout. You know, the thing that I'd underestimated on the evening of Brexit was just how high that turnout actually was, and it was non-voters going to the polls, people who hadn't voted in their lives, that tipped the balance. The question is, Trump has been going for exactly the, you know, the same kind of voters. Have they turned out? I don't know. Now, we, the polls are closing in Ohio, North Carolina and uh, West Virginia in half an hour's time. It'll be very interesting to see what happens uh, there. Both CNN and Fox are projecting Hillary Clinton wins uh, Vermont. No great surprise there. Now, at the beginning of the year, Nigel Farage, I don't imagine that you would have thought you would have become busy mates with Donald Trump. Well, it was odd the way it happened, but I guess Brexit was such a big story. You know, not just in Britain or Europe, but globally. It was a huge story in America. Um, and I went out to the US... Uh, Republican convention just as a tourist and I was stunned not just by the delegates but by American people just saying wow what a story some thought it was great some thought it was crazy um, and team Trump picked up very early on that you know the idea that you take on the establishment you're the little guys they're the big guys and in the end you win and 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 frankly I mean every single night for the last couple of months when Trump goes round America he says you know this is going to be Brexit in fact he even calls himself Mr Brexit I'm not quite sure what qualifies him for that um that wasn't me listeners no. <laughs> um yeah so so they really the Republican activist base have seen this as wow Anything's possible. Um, Chuka Ramuna, you're probably listening to that with a slight degree of horror. You see, hear Nigel Farage talking about Donald Trump. Um, I, I guess Donald Trump is probably not somebody that, that if you met him, you, you might think that you would get on with him. But maybe he's different in private to the public Donald Trump. Uh, I haven't had the misfortune of meeting the man. Um, but, I, look, I mean, with uh, so many people in politics, often the public and the private are quite different. And it's interesting, actually, I mean, to slightly go off field, um, Ed Balls, the impression and the kind of side of Ed that people are now seeing on Strictly Come Dancing, so many people said, oh, my God, I didn't know he was quite like that. Mm. And I was Some like, of well, us did. Well, privately, he's always been, you know. I mean, I, I'm not surprised that he wants to do any, any, and, and it's showing a different side of him, which is refreshing. Um, Nigel Farage, is Donald Trump different privately to the, to the public Donald Trump? Yeah, I think on stage he comes across as pretty aggressive. Um, and you don't... The one thing you don't see with a Trump rally is, is that much humour. Um, and yet, one-on-one, -on -one, he's incredibly charming. Yeah, sure, he's a big alpha male who wants to be in control, but he's very charming and actually very witty and humorous. And what I noticed, one of the reasons that he's built up this sort of... I mean, look, he's not the Republican candidate. That's ri a ridiculous concept. He's an independent. He's been disowned by his own party. But the reason he's built this people's army is he's very good with people. I watched him, you know, going through the crowd, meeting people, having time for people, doing the photographs of people, and I could see why yeah, he was building this strong personal loyalty. Can I ask a question though Nigel? Yeah. Because um, that's, he's not the only US politician who people would put in there in that bracket who can press the flesh and is good with people. What, what beyond that have you seen? Well I would say this uh, to you Chucker, I've seen some very senior British politicians who frankly hate the public. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and, I mean, they really don't like voters and yes. ordinary people. But, but and they can't wait to get away from them yeah. as quickly. But it's and what I, saw with Trump was, what I saw with Trump was actually this guy was really good at plunging into the crowd, shaking hands, doing the pictures, signing the autographs. And, and in doing that, and, and a phenomenal number of public meetings mm. that this guy's done over the last few months, he's built a people's army. But lots of people, that's a feature of the kind of razzmatazz, and I don't say that in a tall pejor pejorative mm. way, and be clear about it, it's a feature of the culture and tradition of American politics, that. But what I'm wondering is, what beyond that do you, have you seen in him in terms of that ability to engage? Well, I think what he does, um, and you would probably call them 
populist movements or something We've like that. We've just been that. talking We've about been that. We've been talking about I know, that. I know. I was listening in the car. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but actually, and, and, and certainly Alex Salmon uh, did it, has done it in spades in Scotland, yeah. it's about speaking in a language that ordinary yeah. people actually understand and but fine, Nigel, but I didn't go around uh, attacking Muslims and Mexicans or demeaning women. And, you know, the question, I suppose... No, what, what you do wait, 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 is encourage wait, people Nigel, to be nasty to English well, people. Let me I mean, finish, goodness let me. me. Finish, let me that, well, that's rubbish. <laughs> <but let me laughs> You're accusing someone else of a signal. One at a time. Never mind about me, Nigel. Just think about the person that you went to speak for and what he said about Mexicans, about women, about Muslims. And just tell the LBC listeners why you wanted to... Uh, announce your support for someone who's had that progression of views throughout a campaign. Just explain that to the... Well, Alex, I, I mean, I've not heard um, Trump defend violent supporters uh, who, in a very racist, aggressive way, attacked a politician from England in the streets of Edinburgh, and you wouldn't even condemn them. So I don't think you're on no, particular... No, 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 I'm not Nigel, sure that Nigel, no, never, it is about never, you, never, because you never, said never a moment ago I, that, that you hadn't said X, me. Y, and Z. Never, so never so I'm not sure you're, the that, that you're on that why stronger audience. You went uh, to declare your support for Donald Trump, who, by his own publicity, announced his attitudes to women, to Muslims, to Mexicans. Just concentrate on that point. And don't yeah. try the deflection that you're so good at, Nigel. Just no, no, no. That it's, point. My dear fellow, it's you that started it by saying I no, wouldn't no, speak no. like that. And I, anyway, I haven't heard. Tell, why did you, I haven't why did heard Trump that? defend violence against opponents. Why did, why did you and do maybe it? you should answer well, that in a moment. Well, you won't be I, listening in this I campaign. Think that but Trump just has made, the point. I think Trump has made some outlandish statements, not ones that I would support. That's for sure. But you supported him. Uh, no, I haven't even, even endorsed him. But, oh, but you went to speak. But Nigel, you went and you appeared at one of his rallies with him on the stage. It was a just simply appeal. telling the Brexit story. No, um, the, and you can take that as you wish. But I certainly want to say that with a huge grin on it. Let me tell you what Trump stands for. And yes, he has made some outrageous statements. He stands for national democracy. He believes that border controls matter. He thinks that Islamic terrorism is a great threat that faces the Western world. Hillary Clinton can't even bring herself to use the word. And just as importantly, his attitude towards foreign affairs is fascinating. She is the hawk. She is the person that has supported endless wars. And that's she is the person, endorsement, endorsement. She is the person that wants to go on provoking Putin. And I do think, actually, yeah. it's quite grown up to say that George Orr is better than World War. And if Trump becomes president, he'll fly to Moscow and at least sit down and talk to Putin. So for all those reasons... I don't think the guy's perfect, far from it, but he is an agent for change, and he does on some of the big issues, I do believe, stand for the right thing. But why, Nigel, I don't understand N this. You, you're usually very straight up. Yeah, you say straight, exactly what you Nigel. think. I just usually. have. But you, why don't you just be honest and just say you support you him, you endorse win. him, you want to see him as the next president of the United States? There's two people who could end up in that position at the end of the at the end of tomorrow, either him or Hillary. Why don't you just be honest and say you want to see him as the president of the United States? Well, I did say that I wouldn't vote for Hillary if she paid me. Um, why are you dancing around and, this? I don't uh, get it. Well, because I criticised, I criticised she, Obama for coming polls, here and telling right. us what to do. But and you're I, not telling the states what to do. You're just giving a view. You're just giving a view. I think it's pretty clear which side of the divide. Just say okay. so. Well, she, Sheila, Sheila Fogarty, bring some order to these proceedings for me, will you? Because I failed oh, to well, do so. Well, you know, I would, except I'm at a party surrounded by drunk people, so I don't think... <laughs> you, oh, you, you, you sound like Nigel's you're at a party. Nigel's your way, You sound like you're at a party. <laughs> <laughs> surrounded by drunk people, but uh, I actually am at one. Uh, listen, I, I want to bring in Jacob Rees-Mogg here. You wanted some civilization in the mix. Here it is. Jacob Rees-Mogg, uh, North East Somerset MP. I, and I think I'm right in describing you as tribally Republican, Jacob, is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely right. Uh, in normal circumstances, I would support the Republican candidate. But I, I've been very interested in what Nigel Farage has been saying, uh, in that Donald Trump is basically an independent uh, and has run against his own party rather than with it. Uh, and that rather salves my conscience in coming to the conclusion that I wouldn't in the end have been able to support him. I notice, um, I, it's probably worth me telling our listeners, Jacob, that uh, they can go to LBC's Facebook page and see the guests in the studio, obviously not us at the US Embassy, but, but, but yourselves in the studio. Very impressed, you're sporting a tuxedo. 
Uh, uh, before I came here, I was speaking to the uh, MCC uh, Golfing Society <laughs> dinner uh, uh, on, a on a combination of Brexit and the American election. Oh, uh, they, I, I always it was thought, in my honour. Well, I always thought that LBC dressed in the way the Home Service used to. So I'm rather shocked <laughs> to see that Mr well, Dale listen, is without a tie. I, I know oh, I can't dear. prove it, but that I'm wearing a ball down. gown and a string of pearls myself. But anyway, listen, ha, what are you making of what you're hearing coming out of the States so far and, and of the campaign generally? Your thoughts on what might happen next? Um, oh, I think it's, it, it makes no sense to predict an election at this stage in the evening, that the vote's being oh, counted come on. and uh, what, what will happen will happen. I, I think it's worth bearing in mind that American elections are conducted uh, at a different tempo from British elections. They campaign more aggressively and for longer and that that's quite alien to the rather more calm and sedate British elections though actually with the two gentlemen uh, to, to, to my right I'm not sure that's invariably true um, with the gentleman to my left it is true it's more sort of sedate uh, sedate and civilized if I may say so I'll take that uh, as a compliment and, and, and to your left one. in more ways than one yeah. the, the, uh, indeed with, um, and, and the two gentlemen on my right fight very tough populist campaigns, both of them actually at the top of their um, profession in that regard. Uh, Listen, but American I'll elections are I'll different. I, I'll do it rather differently, but um, you know, it was clear that Alex Salmon was trying to get Nigel Farage, and Chuck Ramuna was in fact trying to get uh, uh, Nigel Farage to openly say, I endorse Donald Trump, and he wouldn't. You, you've said that you are trying to Same old a politicians. How, how, how far, far, far in your support? You know, no, how far, hang on, guys. How far, how far in you your know. support? How far in your support for Donald Trump will you go, <laughs> Jacob Rees Mogg? I would not vote for Mr. Trump and I would not vote for Mrs. Clinton. I'm afraid I would um, abstain in this election. I'd spoil my ballot paper. And you see, that's quite interesting see, because se several answers, Republican friends of mine in the States are doing exactly that. Uh, one of them, who we might be hearing from later, uh, Daniel Forrester, he, he's writing in John Kasich on his ballot paper, which is effectively spoiling mm. his ballot paper, uh, isn't Jacob, it? Jacob, who would you have written in? Who would I have written well, in? you can write oh, in on American uh, ballot uh, papers. Uh, Boris Johnson, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a magnificent <laughs> president of the United States, and he is, of course, eligible he as well. Is. Yes, because he, he was born there. Yes. Then, now, there's a thought. Honestly, Jacob, fancy trying to get rid of the foreign sector. You should be ashamed. Uh, no, I think just very, it would be very good for uh, British foreign relations um, if uh, president Boris he became Johnson. president. Nigel Farage, do you um, think that if Donald Trump becomes president, he might offer you a role in his White House? Well, the one thing I do know, if Trump becomes president, is that he actually likes this country, something the Obama administration How do you know that? doesn't. Oh, because he's told me himself. You know, I feel a big, strong relationship. His mother, of course, was Scottish. I know Alex Salmon knows him pretty well, too. Uh, he loves this country. He wants to get the special relationship back to where it ought to be. He made it very clear we were at the front of the queue, and I rather like that. Um, is he going to offer me a job? Well, I'm hoping he might if he wins. I, I think, you know, he'll be in need of a proper Eurosceptic ambassador in Brussels to the European Union. I mean, I would rather like that job. And being a foreigner would not disqualify me. How about that, Chukar Amuna? <laughs> Nigel going off to Brussels to Wouldn't represent be the, first time, the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost for words, so you know, what can I say? Well, as long as we can bring the EU down, it doesn't matter how we do it, does it? I mean, because we want to get democracy surely, back in Europe surely, and liberty and wealth. Surely Nigel deigning to be ambassador from America I thought America you were becoming a lord. Yeah, but yeah, well, it, no, he can be both. He can be both a that's lord, true, lord and Farage. an American ambassador. Gosh, I'm going to be very isn't busy, aren't I? Is this a recognition of the importance of the Nigel. European Union that such a person would Sheila, we need your help again. Wouldn't you know? My help. I'll just wade in every now and again. Once he I, hates once Brussels I, so much he wants to go back to it. I've dealt, once I've dealt with the drunks here, I'll deal with the drunks in the studio. We're drinking um, water here, Sheila. I know, I'm have kidding you. Know, you. In no, these although, global although, radio months. Although, I have to say, for the first time I'm reading, um, we're live on Facebook, so if you go to LBC's Facebook page, for the first time I'm seeing this high-speed comment that comes in. I'll try and read a few, but I, I feel like a, an aged old granny who can't quite keep up with Facebook as I read these, these messages. Come back, Nigel, we need you, says Jessica Wall. John Dismore says, is it how Halloween still, LBC. Uh, Cheryl Parker says, take your money from an organisation you want to destroy. I'm not quite sure what that means. Stephen Anthony, no. Uh, and Nicola, no. This is the danger of reading live comments on Facebook. No. Uh, Twitter is a halcyon ocean of calmness compared to no, Facebook actually, Live. I, I, I did want to come in just a moment ago because, Nigel Farage, I wanted to ask you, mm. you, you called for protests at the Supreme Court and I know that at the time of the, or ahead of the, 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 the final referendum vote in June, you were concerned that if it didn't go the way of 
Brexit, that, that there would be, you didn't use the word riots, but, you, but, but you, you, you thought that there could be trouble, heated disturbance on the streets. How concerned are you that if Trump loses, we might see that up to and including riots on the streets of the United States? Well, I mean, if the Trump supporters felt the election had been cheated from them, there might be a danger of that. I hope they don't. And similarly, in this country, you know, what I want is for Eurosceptics who are frustrated by delay, frustrated by hearing MPs who wish to ignore, uh, you know, a clear vote to leave not just the EU but the single market. What I want to do is to channel that frustration into something that is peaceful, and peaceful protest, I think, is the right way. OK, thank you for that answer to the question. Um, uh, Jay, sorry, Sheila. No, no, go. Um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, um, in the long term, does it really matter to this country who becomes the next president of the United States? I mean, our relations with the United States are surely so strong that they can withstand any, anybody. I, I think it's enormously in the British interest to get on with whoever happens to be the president of the United States. I think it's ill-advised of British politicians to be aggressively rude towards either of the candidates uh, because one of them will win and we will need to work with that person. Uh, I think one of the things Tony Blair did well was managing to get on both with Bill Clinton and with um, George W. Bush, that that was in the British national interest and was a political success uh, on his part. But is the relationship always that strong? I think an element of personality is important, that uh, when Bill Clinton was elected president he didn't get on with John Major and that was damaging to our <coughs> interests and didn't help uh, that the, the two leaders were um, not fond of each other. So I think we want to get on, but that if our Prime Minister is sensible and our diplomacy is effective, then you're broadly right that the individual in charge won't make that great a difference, particularly considering the separation of powers in the US working in such a way that it makes it hard for a president to change things fundamentally. Can I, can I just tell Jacob that the art for the British Prime Minister is not to get on with an American president as Tony Blair did with George W. Bush by joining in an invasion of Iraq, the price of which we are still paying for. The art is much more what Harold Wilson did, which was managed to get on with Lyndon Johnson without going into to Vietnam. It's easy enough to get on with someone if you join them in a disaster disastrous illegal invasion of another country, the consequences of which the world is, is still enduring. I think the point you make about Harold Wilson is an extremely valid one, and the relationship he had with Lyndon B. Johnson, in spite of not supporting Vietnam, uh, was very beneficial to, to the UK. Uh, Jimmy Carter and Jim Callaghan, I believe, gave each other suits with JC <laughs> in the lining, so close was their personal relationship. It hasn't just been Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan, it's been a long-running theme, but personal relationships are, are more important I think, well, than and, the party that and, is And if charge. you look at the history of the relationship between those two, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan, she stood up to him far more than people actually think. If you, There's plenty of books that, to provide a lot of evidence for that. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Charles Moore's um, uh, biography of Margaret Thatcher is absolutely brilliant in describing their relationship. But she also knew that America would always fundamentally act in America's interest, and therefore we should never overstate the special relationship. Uh, they are a very important ally to us. We're not quite so important to them. They're much bigger than we are, and they're more single-minded in following their own self-interest. Um, Nigel Farage, quick final question to you. Mm. I know you've got to uh, head off. Um, Try to look forward. I know you don't want to really sort of call this election for anyone at, at, at the moment for reasons you, you've made very clear. But um, I imagine in six months' time we've had President Trump. Where, where mm. do you think the relationship between him and Prime Minister Theresa May will be? What I think he'll be saying, look, let's have a trade deal. You know, you are one country I don't fear with undercutting of labour, so we'll be well down that road, I hope, at least in terms of the conversation. And I think in a post-Brexit world, that's important for us. The other very important thing, if Trump wins, that Britain needs to do is Trump has questioned the contribution of many members of NATO, and I think he's right in a way. A lot of members of NATO are simply not pulling their weight. Now, I would not want to see Trump's criticism of NATO becoming American withdrawal from NATO. That would worry me, and I think worry a lot of Europe too. And I think in that regard, it's very important that we have a, that we have a good relationship with President Trump if that's what we get. At the moment, 
uh, the Conservative Party, the traditional friends of the Republicans, have no conversation with Team Trump at all. Um, elements of the Labour Party, of, like the London Mayor, have been pretty rude to him, although you could argue he'd been pretty rude about Muslims. So at the minute, you know, in this country, I think, think apart from Piers Morgan and myself, no one knows him. Uh, so, uh, so it will be important to build a relationship and to be the bridge to try and make sure we can redefine what NATO is. Very important. And you talk about good conversations. When was the last time you had a word with Donald Trump? Does he ring you up for advice? No, no, no. He doesn't ring me every single day. Of course he doesn't. But, you know, I do know his team and I am in touch with them on a very but, regular basis. And, it, and it, listen, well, if he when wins... When did you speak to him last? If he wins, it, if he wins, it matters. When did you last speak to him uh, personally? Not for a little bit, but that doesn't matter. A little bit. That, that's a have you met, hang on, I need to know, have you met Melania? I, it's a pure, I, I'm not going to discuss who I've met, what I've oh, done. Oh, you can tell no, us if you've no, met no, her no, or not, no, surely. No, no. I, I, you know, I don't do indiscretion. He's practising <laughs> a diplomat. Oh, come on. Exactly, I'm come getting on. ready for my role in Brussels. You're becoming positively <laughs> statesmanlike. <laughs> and Nigel, I, I have a feeling you might be heading Sheila Fogarty's way at the US Embassy, am I right? If they're still serving, I'm on my way. Well, uh, oh, Sheila, you, you might be able to get that answer out of him by three o'clock because well, you know, snifters come like and her. join us, Nigel Farage, because I have a whole series of questions. That I'll I see you very to soon. You about all kinds of okay, things. Nigel, okay, Nigel, thank you very thank much. You.